Hi, I'm Chris Sangster, and welcome back to the studio. Today, I want to show you what I think are the most underrated, overlooked, but insanely useful shortcuts in Logic Pro. But before we start, quick question for you. What are your most used shortcuts in Logic Pro? Share them in the comments below. That way, we can all learn from each other. I love the knowledge that is passed around in the comment sections of my videos, and I would love to see that continue to grow. So drop a comment now and let me know what is your favorite Logic Pro shortcut. All right, so we spend a lot of time talking about workflow hacks, keyboard shortcuts, all kinds of time-saving methods that are specific to Logic Pro. However, there are a subset of shortcuts that are absolutely vital to being productive in Logic Pro that are not specific to the DAW itself. And they're often overlooked as maybe too obvious or just not important when people are trying to speed up their workflows in Logic Pro. They are the default Apple system shortcuts. So those are the ones that perform the same function in every application on a Mac. I've worked with so many students over the years that menu dive to find these basic commands when they're just a few simple keyboard strokes away. And the best part is this will not only save you time in Logic Pro, but it will also increase your productivity in every Mac application. So let's dive in with the big boy, the most important shortcut of them all, the almighty save command. Yep, hitting command S on your keyboard will save your current Logic project. Although Logic does have a very robust autosave feature, it's not foolproof. I recommend making a habit of hitting command S regularly. Eventually, it will just become second nature and you'll do it without even thinking. Moving on to maybe the most obvious one of them all, command Q to quit. Not much to say here, but there is no need to ever go into a menu on a Mac to quit an application. Command Q fits so elegantly under the fingers on the keyboard, and it's another one that with just a few days of repetition, it'll become so second nature that you don't even have to think about it. Related to the quit command is Command W to close the current window, but there is a little bit of nuance to this one in Logic Pro. When there are multiple Logic Pro windows open, such as having the main window and the floating piano roll window open, hitting Command W will close just the top window. However, if only the main window is open, Command W will close the entire project. And closing the project, but not quitting the application entirely, is very helpful if you jump around to different Logic projects frequently, like I do. This is because it takes a lot more time to start up the application than it does to just switch projects with the application open. I actually leave Logic Pro running pretty much all the time on my computer, so I can avoid that startup time and just jump into a project when I need to. There is a shortcut to force the project to close even with multiple windows open, and although it's not a system-wide shortcut, I do think it's worth mentioning here. It's Option Command W and that will close the current project no matter how many windows are open. Next up, we have two more super obvious ones, but I'm not sure it's well understood how exactly they apply to Logic Pro. And those are the copy and paste commands. Command C to copy and Command V to paste. Just like in a Word document or Excel spreadsheet, we can copy and paste most things in Logic Pro using these key commands. The biggest thing to understand is that the paste point will almost always be determined by the playhead position. So we can copy and paste this region to another point in the timeline by first selecting it, then hitting Command C to copy it, then navigating the playhead to a new spot in the timeline, and finally hitting Command V to paste the copy at that point. I find this really helpful when trying to line up a region with a specific point in the waveform of another track. For example, trying to get this snare sample to line up with the strum of this guitar track here. Place the playhead at the start of the guitar strum and use the keyboard shortcut to paste in the snare sample right at that point. Just make sure to have the track header of the snare track selected before hitting the paste command so that it's pasted on the correct track. 
And this applies not only to regions, but also to MIDI notes in the piano roll. And although there is a method for copy pasting that I personally prefer over this one in most instances, and I will discuss that in a moment, the place I find the copy paste key command most useful is with automation. Copying sections of automation in Logic can be a really finicky process. But here's a method that I like to use to make it a bit simpler. First, go to the Snap to Grid menu. Scroll down to Snap Automation and enable it by choosing a division of bar. Then on the bar line before the section of automation you want to copy, make a new automation point. Because of the snap automation setting, this will be placed perfectly on the bar line. Then highlight the entire section of automation you want to copy, including this new point we just created, and hit Command C to copy it. Then place the playhead on the bar line before where the automation needs to be pasted. This is very accurate as the playhead naturally will snap to the bar lines when snap to grid is enabled. In this example, I want to copy this automation to the second half of this base region. So I'm going to place the playhead at bar 83, then simply hit command V to paste the automation. This process guarantees the automation gets placed in the exact correct spot by anchoring it to that fixed bar line point. Next up, we have to mention the undo commands and the small quirks about them in Logic Pro. They are command Z to undo your most recent change and shift command Z to redo what was last undone. So for example, if I move this region, but then decide I didn't actually want to move it, I can hit command Z to place it back to its original position. But then if I change my mind again and decide I actually did want to move it, I can hit shift command Z to redo that move. And this same process applies to any action we take in Logic Pro, with one very serious caveat, the mixer window. It's actually any setting that's found in the mixer window. So this is things like changing a volume faders level, changing a pan position, whether you do it on the track header in the mixer window or in the inspector channel strip, in order to undo and redo these changes, we have to have a very specific setting enabled first. Go to the edit menu and enable include mixer undo steps in project undo history. So silly that you have to enable this first, but you do. It's also worth mentioning the undo history window. It's also found inside the edit menu. Firstly, if we need to undo many steps at once, it's easier to go into this list and navigate back to the step we want to reset to instead of hitting Command Z a million times in a row. Secondly, we need to take note of these two buttons in the top right, Mixer and Plugin. They are an extension of the Include Mixer Undo Steps setting. The button that says Mixer is directly connected to that setting. When we tick the setting on in the Edit menu, it will show as enabled here in this window. The plugin button is the exact same function, except it's for changes we make inside of plugins. But there's no other way to enable it that I'm aware of, except for in this undo history window. It is on by default, but if you find yourself unable to undo and redo changes you make inside of plugins, make sure that this plugin button is enabled in the undo history window. Before we continue on with the video, I want to show you how to get the most out of Logic Pro. Listen, I love Logic, but the truth is that right out of the box, or should I say right out of the app store, it is not fully optimized for musicians, producers, and audio engineers. There are just some truly strange default settings in Logic Pro. That's why I created the Logic Pro Optimization Guide, a free to download video guide and accompanying PDF cheat sheet that walks you through step-by-step -step all of the settings to change in order to get the most out of Logic Pro. These setting changes will benefit first-time Logic Pro users and wily Logic Pro vets alike. I truly believe that by changing these settings, you will not only improve your workflow, but actually speed up your music making process. So 
If you want to take control of the DAW and optimize Logic Pro, click the link in the description box below the like button and download the Logic Pro optimization guide. It's all yours, completely free. The next two shortcuts are about selection. This is best shown by selecting tracks either in the track headers in the main window or the channel strips in the mixer window. I'm going to use the mixer window for this example. If we click to select a track, then hold down shift and click to select a different track, all of the tracks between the first track and the second track will be selected. So to select a continuous group of tracks, all you have to do is click on the first one and then shift click on the last one. This is also super handy for selecting a large group of files in Finder. But what if we want to select non-continuous tracks? For example, if I want to skip over selecting this aux track, I simply click on the first track and then command click on the next track. That selects only these two tracks and not the one in between them. The great thing about this is that we can combine these two shortcuts to quickly select exactly what we need. I find this particularly helpful when setting up a new mix, as I want to select all of the individual tracks to bring their faders down to zero, but leave all of the aux tracks untouched. I can use shift click to select this first group of tracks, then command click to skip over this aux track, and then again use shift click to select the next group of tracks. Super helpful for quickly organizing a session. Finally, let's look at the wonders of click and drag. If I had to pick the most powerful thing to teach a new Mac user, it would be the power of click and drag. From moving files around to copying files, selecting files, there's just so much we can do with a simple click and drag of the mouse. And of course, this carries over to Logic Pro. Click and drag can be used to select multiple regions at once. Click and drag can be used to select multiple channel strips in the mixer window. Click and drag can be used to select multiple MIDI notes in the piano roll. Click and drag can be used to select multiple automation points. Click, drag, and drop can even be used to import files into Logic from Finder or the desktop. But the real power of selecting multiples of anything in Logic Pro is that now we can affect them all together in one move. So now we can raise all of these selected automation points together. Or in the mixer, we can lower all of these volume faders at once. Or in the main window, we can move all of these regions together or create a repeat of these regions with the shortcut Command R. There's a little bonus one for you. Mastering the click and drag will dramatically increase your speed working in Logic Pro. Honestly, maybe more than any other shortcut if you aren't already using it. And to truly maximize the click and drag, we have to add just one qualifier key to it. By holding down the Option key and then clicking and dragging on any item in Logic Pro, it copies that item and pastes it to wherever you let go of the mouse. This is my favorite way to copy paste in Logic Pro that I mentioned earlier. Again, this applies to regions, MIDI notes, automation points, even entire tracks. By far the easiest way to duplicate a track, in my opinion, is just to option click and drag down on a track header. I know some people prefer the key commands to the mouse commands, and that's totally valid if that's how you like to work. But personally, I'm a mouse heavy user and option click and drag is one of my all time favorite Logic Pro shortcuts. I seriously use it all the time. There we go, the most useful, underrated, and honestly, the simplest Logic Pro shortcuts. I hope you found this video helpful and learned about at least one new workflow improving shortcut. If you did, please subscribe to the channel. I have tons of content that can help you level up your game with Logic Pro, mixing, mastering, and music production. So get subscribed to be the first to see all the great new content I have planned for the future. And if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below. I would be happy to answer them. I'll see you at the studio next time. Thanks.